What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered what in the world is the pixel burst tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and today we're talking all about the pixel burst tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. This tool is, well, it's confusing is what it is. It's just a little bit quirky and a little bit difficult to understand why it's there and what it's doing. But I think there is potential here for doing some really nice pixel art. But the first thing that is confusing about this tool is that it's called something different on the desktop version and the iPad version. So here on the iPad, we're talking about the pixel brush tool, but this is the equivalent tool of something called the pixel tool in Affinity Photo on the desktop. So I'm not sure why they threw in an extra word for the iPad, but it does work in the same way as many other brush tools in Affinity Photo. So perhaps that's why. Not sure why they just aren't consistent across the platform though. So if you're confused about that, that kind of will help you maybe to understand those tools are really the same tool. Now, before we hop onto the iPad, I just wanna take this moment to remind you about my courses. I have courses on Affinity Photo as well as Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, and other creative apps. So if you're trying to learn Affinity Photo, go ahead and drop down in the description of this video and find the links to those courses which are over on Skillshare. Now let's hop onto the iPad and see what we can learn. All right, so here we are in Affinity Photo on the iPad. The Pixel Brush tool is found as a subtool to the Paintbrush tool that we talked about last week. So if you missed last week's video about the Paintbrush tool, make sure you go back and check that out because that will be very helpful in kind of understanding some of the things that happen in this tool. So it's the seventh tool down, the Paintbrush tool, and if you just tap on it, then you are going to get the sub tools. And we see that the Pixel Brush tool is the second one down. So let's go ahead and click that. It just looks like nine squares arranged in a grid. So what is the point of the pixel brush tool? It's to paint solid pixels. I've set this document as a very small 32 by 32 pixel square. So this will be easier for you to see. And I've also set up my guides to be here in purple. And you can see each of those squares is a pixel. And my brush is currently set to one pixel square. So I'm going to paint in red here so that it's easy for you to make out. When I tap, you'll see it is filling in individual pixels. And as I drag, I can't draw like diagonally except in these little two pixel lines down the side. So that is how this brush works. It's going to be the solid square pixels. And why would you want this? Well, to do pixel art. It's kind of the obvious reason that I can think of. That's what I would use it for. Although I normally do pixel art in some other applications. But if I were going to do some Infinity Photo, that's what I would do here. Um, go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know if that's something that interests you. If you'd like a tutorial on doing pixel art in Infinity Photo, and maybe that's something I can do in the future. So you can see this brush does not fade out towards the edges. And even if we come down here to the width in the context toolbar and make it bigger, let's say that we go ahead and set this to eight, it's always going to paint it in a square. But you can see there's no fading or anything out towards the edges. So it doesn't have any of that kind of drop off of the brushes that we were looking at last week. And you also conversely can't do the wet edges where it gets darker around the edges of the brush stroke. It's just going to be this solid square. So where it gets confusing is down there in that menu where I was changing the size. There are a lot of settings here that were kind of made for different types of brushes that are not pixel brushes. And for some reason they've carried through into the pixel brush, but they don't really do a whole lot. They're not super useful. So the first button here is called alternate. And we're actually not going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about that towards the end of the video when we get to the settings for the alternate tool. I don't know why they're not next to each other. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have the settings and the tool separate from each other. And that's not something that normally happens in Affinity Photo, but that's the way it is now. Then we have the width, which is just the size of the brush. And it's important to note that this is always the size in squared pixels. An eight brush like I did right now is eight pixels by eight pixels. And so it's going to be a square. Whereas if it's set to one, if I take it all the way back, it's just going to fill in one by one, which is just one square. If it's at two, it's going to fill in two by two when you tap, which is going to be four squares. That's a really important piece to understand here if you are making pixel art. Then we have the opacity and the opacity will determine how it overlays with something else. So let me go ahead. You won't be able to see this unless I change the color. So I'm going to change this to green. And if I come over and I start to paint over, you can see that that is completely opaque. It's 100% opaque. But if I take this down to 50, and I go over it, you can see that it is starting to blend. So that opacity does work, works similar to the way it does with another brush. Okay, I'm gonna bring that back up to 100, and I'm gonna change back to red. Okay, so the next is flow. And if you remember, flow determines how quickly the stamps are laid down and how opaque they are as they go. I'm actually gonna make a new layer here to show you this. And my flow right now is solid. It just goes straight across. But if I lower my flow, 
to let's say around 50, you can see there's some fading on the left and the right edges. And if I lower that even further, you can start to see as I draw a diagonal line, this is starting to look more like another brush with kind of some anti-aliasing going on. And so the flow doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I think, in this particular scenario. I don't know why you would want a lower flow as you're doing pixel art, but some people might want that and it is available. Now the last setting here, I'll bring that flow up to 100, this last setting here is hardness. And you can see I'm currently on hardness zero and it doesn't make one bit of difference. So if I do this hardness zero, it's like that. And if I bring hardness up to 100, it's just like that. Zoom in, they're exactly the same. No difference on the hardness, whether it is zero or 100, it doesn't matter because this is painting hard edge square pixels. So that's all there is to that. Then you have the more button, which just like last time is actually going to take us into the brush menu. Of course, there's a lot of settings here that won't really apply when we're working with pixel brushes and we aren't going to go into it here. But let's go ahead and just click cancel. Okay, then you have the color, which you've already seen me use, and that's just going to give you your color menu, so you can set what color you want your brush to use. And then you have force pressure. Now, force pressure, if you remember from last time, is the setting that allows you to determine how big or small the brush is. This is a little bit confusing because if I crank this up, let's say to 10, and I think it's easiest with pixels to just use the little calculator, and I just have force pressure on, if I tap, I'm just going to get a small one. If I tap and hold, I'm still just going to get a small one. But if I tap and hold and drag, I'll get a big one. So the force pressure doesn't really work all that well, in my opinion. I don't understand its usefulness here, so I would just leave that turned off. Now we get here into the stabilizers. These stabilizers work exactly like they do in the regular brush tool. So if you watched last week's video, you'll know what's going on with that. But basically when you turn them on, you'll get either rope or window stabilizer, and you can kind of lead your line through. It's probably not honestly all that useful in the pixel scenario either. So I wouldn't worry too much about it and I would just keep it set to no stabilizer. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear this again. Okay, and I'm going to show you the symmetry tools because I think the symmetry tools do have a lot of potential to be very useful for working with pixel art. So when you turn on symmetry, you are going to have this dividing line, of course, going across just like we did before with the regular brushes. And then we're going to be able to paint in symmetry. And so you can see that when I start tapping here, it's going to go on the other side of that line in symmetry. Now, if we want it to mirror it, we can turn on the mirror and then we can draw like this in mirror. So of course this has a lot of great potential for doing things like creating sprites that are going to be the same on one side and the other so that you only have to do that work once. So that is very useful, but it's more useful if this line weren't running horizontal. So how do you turn that line around? Well, you just grab on the line and turn it. Now you might try and line that up exactly, but you might not be quite right. It would be hard to do. So the only way to get it to snap into place from what I can tell is to have a keyboard attached and hold down shift. So I have the magic keyboard, so I'm holding down shift and it just snaps into place there. Now, of course, with this, let me go ahead and add a new layer. This is going to make it easy to do things like you might want to if you were creating a character. So you could make a little character like that and it would be really easy to do. Now, of course, you can adjust the number of lines that you have so you can get different quadrants, but I think just setting it to one is going to be the best. And then you have the lock option, which will lock that in place so that you can see that little handle on the line has disappeared and you can't move it around. I would suggest turning that on because when you're drawing close to the line, it can be really easy to accidentally move it. Okay, so that's symmetry. I think that is probably one of the most useful things if you're doing pixel art. And then we have this alternate option. And the alternate option determines what the tool will do when it's in alternate mode. In this case, it's set to erase. Now you can get into alternate mode a couple of different ways. You can go all the way back to the first menu and turn on alternate, or you can, I'm gonna leave that there so you can see, you can double tap your Apple pencil and then alternate will come on. So then we can erase, and of course it will do this in symmetry as well. The other way to do this if alternate is turned off is to hold down command on your keyboard if you have a keyboard attached, and then it will use the alternate tool. So pretty useful feature there, but it's a little confusing why the button is in a spot different from the settings. Let's go back to the settings just so you can see what's there. There's erase, there's fill with background color, and there's undo from snapshot. I don't actually know what undo from snapshot does. Not sure what that's for, but if you know, please drop in the comments and tell us so that we can know. And that is all of the pieces of the pixel brush tool. 
So that's how you use it. Some of the kind of quirks or eccentricities with it. And go ahead and let me know how you might use this in your workflow. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Pixel Brush tool and Infinity Photo on the iPad. You know, it is a little bit confusing to understand why there's all of those different settings and dials for this tool when they don't really make a lot of sense. But the tool itself is a pretty simple and straightforward tool to use especially if you're trying to do simple pixel art and you just set it to one pixel and just go ahead and go from there. What it can't do are a lot of like maybe the more advanced pixel features that you might find in something like a sprite. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and make sure you give it a big like, thumbs up, and if you really are enjoying my videos, don't forget you can always go ahead and click thanks. Now, I wanna know from you, do you use the Pixel Brush for anything? Are you planning to use it for anything? Go ahead, drop in the comments and let me know. We will chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.